All right, this will be my third video for Lab 7, and I'm going to do uh, math functions. As you can see, I've got some contacts here, some edge-triggered contacts, and some normal contacts here. And many PLCs have the math operation, but they don't have what Click has, and that's the one-shot. Execute one time. Okay. Now, if you don't have that execute one time in your PLC, you can use the edge trigger. Just about every PLC has an edge trigger, either a positive edge or a negative edge, and you can configure that by double clicking on it there. So, what I wanted to do is put this together to show you the importance of using an edge trigger or a one shot down here. Okay? So let's go and do this. I'm going to open these up first and let's look at the math and what it is. Here's a simple formula. DS1 equals DS1 plus 1. I'm going to increment that DS1 value by 1. And then here's another one. DS1 equals DS1 minus 1. Okay. And we go on. These two functions are the same as these two functions are the same as these. But look right here you notice there's a little edge trigger on there shown and uh, let me see if I can zoom in on that there you go you can see the little edge indicating it's an, a one-shot function okay so let's go ahead and write this project down And say okay. Got it there. We got the status on. Everything's all set to zero. Now I'm going to push X1 and increment that value up. See, it only happens once every every button push. It only goes up by one. So I did four push buttons. But look at the next one where I did not do any qualification on X1, and it jumped up to 4790. Okay, then down here where I don't have edge triggers, but I do have the one-shot math function. All right, the same thing. The first two have the same value as the second two. I mean, as the last two. There we go. We keep going. Now watch what happens. I'm going to hold the X1 button. Watch count two open. Watch this as I hold the uh, X1 in. It just keeps climbing, keeps climbing. And then it wraps around. It's the negative values and it keeps climbing again. Keeps on going. So you don't want to do that with the math. You either use an edge trigger function to do it once or the one shot function inside the math to do it once. Okay, for every operation. Now if you're going to try and count your scans, that's another story, okay, but we're not doing that, you know, and, and it's just a, uh, we're counting operations. Do you want to make sure that you don't double count them? Now I'm going to come down here, insert a run, and I'll put, uh, I'll put you know, my close contact for this, X3, okay, and then I'm going to come over here and click on math. And these are all the functions I have. So what I'm going to say is DS3. Well, let me do something else. I'm not going to do DS3. I'm going to do a floating point. And uh, DF. I'm going to use DF1. There we go. Okay, DF1 equals DS1 times... Where is the times? There's times DS2. Okay? So since DS1 and DS2, well, they're not, they won't have the same value. So we're going to see some pretty wild things in DF1. Okay? <coughs> now I'm going to do another one. Oops. I need to go and click on one shot. Make sure you do that. Okay, 
I'm going to do another one. X3. Okay. And I'll do another math. This is DF2 equals DF DS2 times 0 0.5. So I'm going to multiply it by 0.5 constant, okay? Let's put that in there, okay? And get my end in there. So let's go see what happens with this. turn on the status and you can see everything set there so what I'm going to do now we're going to increment now you notice that nothing's happening here DS1 times DS2 the result is that oh I gotta hit there we go wow okay I increment a few more and do it again so you can see I'm going to run x1 well, let's go over here and do the reference view data view ds1 I'm going to write a new value of 30,000 in there all right close now x3 Let's do the math on that. There you go. You got a scientific notation number, 9.213 times 10 to the 8th. That's a folding point number there for you. Now, one of the things, if we stop this, okay, stop it, and then just happen to fire it up and go back into it, you see all these values are the same. Now if you want to change those values, let's go down at the very end here and write that SC2. Remember that as being the first scan. And then we're going to copy. And we're going to put a zero. A zero. And we want to do a, a fill. See down here a fill. Destination is going to be DS1 to DS3. So that'll clear all of that. Oops. What did I do here? Oh, zero. I forgot to put a zero in there. Okay. Fill from DS1 to DS3. So that'll zero out those three values. Then we can go here, and we have a contact, and that be SC2 again, and we're going to do another copy, and we're going to put 0, 0. .0. Don't forget that decimal point if you're filling in floating point values, because if I come in here and put 0, it thinks it's an integer, so you got to put a decimal point on there. Okay, destination would be DF1, and I want to do a fill, so I'm going to go to DF2. All right, so that'll zero everything out on the first scan. Very simple. So we're going to write it. Of course, there's my end.
Now I'm going to go ahead and put some numbers in here. I've got to turn the status on. Okay, you can see a bunch of numbers in there. Okay, I'm going to do the multiplications. We got stuff in there. Okay, now I'm going to do like I did before. I'm going to stop it and run it. This instruction down here cleared out everything, as you saw that. Okay, that's it. That's how you use the math functions with click. Very easy. And between those three videos, you should be able to knock out Lab 7 in a short bit.